All right, hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the second part of the automata assembly, but this is for activity 4.5, which is cams in motion. We're using Fusion 360, and we've already assembled some parts using some part files that were given to us um, from Project Lead the Way. So we put those into Fusion 360 in the last video. We got a little crank that turns. We have a follower that moves up and down, and we have a guide that locks everything into place, and it is a rigid constraint to the box. So here's the deal is we actually don't need that box. It actually kind of gets in the way. It makes it tough to see on the inside. So we're going to come over here to this little light bulb here for the box, and we're just going to click on it. That makes the box disappear. The box is there. It's still grounded, and everything is locked into the box. We can hover over it and kind of see where it was. So we need it there. We needed to put it there, but now we don't need to see it because it just kind of hinders things. Okay. We're also going to do a couple more things before we go any further. First of all, we're going to come over here, and we're going to double click on this angle, and we're going to set it to zero degrees. That resets it so that the axle handle is vertical, straight up and down. And we're going to capture this position going forward, okay? So now what we have is a time marker right down here where it says position one. At any point in time, we want to go back to this position, or if we start to do other stuff, we can by just saying, uh, next time it asks me if I want to capture a position, I can just say continue, and it'll bring me back to this zero degree marking. That's going to be really nice. Okay, you'll appreciate that later on. Um, the other thing we're going to do before we go any farther in the last part of this assembly is we're going to add this little ruler off to the side. So I'm going to drag this in. Wait for it to do its thing. Okay. There we go. And I can see I want I want to rotate this. Okay, so I'm going to drag it this direction. I'm going to go 90 degrees. I'm going to hit enter. Okay. And now I have a ruler in place. And that ruler is going to be used to measure some distances later on. Okay. Before I go and I get this thing, I'm going to worry about the height. The first thing I want to do is make sure that it's located correctly left, right. Because right now, if I look at it from this view, it can drag around all over the place. Okay. So I'm going to go through here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of, of measurement here. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to inspect is the distance of this line. The length of that line is 0.5 inches. Okay. And I also want to know then, um, click close, just do it again. I want to know the length of this line. The length of this line is 0 0.063 inches. So uh, we're going to try to get this as close as we can to the middle of the follower rod when I look at it left to right. Okay. So we're going to add in. Uh, excuse me, we're going to add in a joint. And this is where it says continue or capture position. I'm going to click continue. Okay, here's my continue. It's back at zero degrees no matter what this rotation was. And I'm going to choose then a the front. So notice, notice the orientation of this. Okay, this is kind of important to note. See how the circle can face sideways or it can face forward? I want to make sure it's facing forward because I want the front plane of the ruler. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select a similar point, maybe like this one here. Okay, now that's weird. That's not exactly what I want. If I zoom out, I can see that things are not correct here. So I'm just going to click flip. Okay, and when I click flip, I just zoom back out. You'll notice then these things are getting pretty close to each other, right? So, so all it's doing is it's adding a rigid constraint in. Now, I don't want a rigid constraint. I want a planar constraint. And what the planar constraint basically says is that those two faces, like the old mate and flush idea, okay, those two faces are not going to be able to move left or right from each other, okay, unless I add in an offset. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to drag this to about the correct locations where it's about halfway. It's not really truly important. Negative 0.225 looks good to me. Okay, so I'm just going to type that number in. And now what I have is a ruler that will move, okay? Now, I, it looks like it's still moving around all over the place, right? But if I go click on this front view, I will notice that I am no longer allowed to move it left and right. I can only move it up and down, okay? So there, we have a ruler. This is an optical illusion. It is locked into place in line with that follow rod, so it kind of cuts it up and down. We're gonna get that thing in the correct location a little bit more later on. But for now, what we have is a ruler in place that we can use to do measurements. So now, the last and most important part. Oh, we don't want that to go up and down. We're going to have to change that a little bit too, okay? Um, we're sitting at four and a half minutes. Let's go ahead and shut this video down now. And uh, in the next video, I'll walk you through how to add one of these cams into place and get it going.